we have a connected particles question here. In fact, it involves a pulley. So a mass of three kilograms, a mass of five kilograms, they're attached, inextensible string, smooth pulley, normal kind of approximations being made, systems held at rest with a string taut, hanging parts are vertical, P and Q are above a horizontal plane here. Find the tension in the string immediately after the particles are released. Well, let's look at the forces acting on P. There's going to be a weight, which is 3 times G. G is gravity, 9.8. And then there's going to be a tension pulling it up because it's going over a pulley and this 5 kilogram weight is trying to pull it up. Then on Q, we've got very similar. The weight is going to be 5G. And then there's a tension exactly the same acting up. Okay, that's how we can set out this question. No other force is going on. But the result is that this five kilogram weight is going to win and it's going to pull the three kilogram weights up. And we can set up some equations to, to deal with that. So if I look at P and I'm going to apply F equals MA upwards. Upwards is positive because it's going to move upwards. Then T minus 3G is going to equal 3A masses 3. And then for the other one, Q, this one's going to move down. It just makes life a little bit easier if you, you know, if you make the correct, um, the correct direction positive. And probably I should have added this on, so it's going to accelerate this way, and this one's going to accelerate that way. Okay, the same magnitude. So in this case, five g minus t is going to equal five a, and I've constructed. Two equations with two unknowns. These are simultaneous equations. Now, I'm being asked for the tension, but I tend to find with these sorts of questions, because you've got a t and a minus t, it just makes sense to um, eliminate t and work out a first. And we can do that by adding them together. So adding them is going to give 2g, because minus 3g plus 5g is 2g, is equal to 8a. And then a is therefore going to be a quarter times g, okay, it's just 2 over 8, so 9.8 divided by 4, which you can do on your calculator, um, or you can halve it, 4.9, and halve it again, 2.45. And then substitute back into either one, so therefore t is going to be 3 times 9.8 plus 3 times 2.45. Okay, I think I'm going to use my calculator for that. And we get 36.75. Now I've written the answer in full, but it, it says in the, um, actually it says in the mark scheme to leave it like 36.75, but actually there's no way we can be that accurate to four significant figures. The weights are only given to one significant figure, gravity is only given to two. So I personally would write it at most to three, 36.8 newtons. I think that will be expected though, so I wouldn't go any less than that. All right, that's part one sorted. On to part two. So we're told after descending 2.5 meters, Q strikes the plane and is immediately brought to rest. It's given that P does not reach the pulley in a subsequent motion. So let's just take a look at what's happening. Okay, I've just got these uh, these particles to show what's happening. So T is going down. And as it goes down, P goes up by the same amount because the string is taut. Okay, it keeps going down. And then Q is going to hit the plane and suddenly stop. So we can investigate the motion during this period. This is going to be stage one. 
So it's going to be the start to Q striking the plane. And I'm going to apply, I'm going to look at Q and I'm going to apply SUVAT in the downwards direction. So it's traveled 2.5 meters. It started off zero. And then the acceleration, it's not under free fall. So it's not gravity. It's actually this 2.45 from the first part of the question. Before I do any calculations, let's think about what we actually want to find. So T then hits the floor. Sorry, Q hits the, the, the floor or the plane. And uh, P is actually going to carry on moving up. So it's now the string is no longer taut because this one's not moving anywhere. And it's just going to carry on up, basically just under the influence of gravity. So it's going to carry on up, stop, and then come back down. And then it's going to be in the exact same place it was when Q hit the floor that the string is going to become taut again. Because that's when it sort of, you know, that was the moment that it was taut and then it hits the ground, it carries on, the string's kind of like loose at that point, comes back down, pulls it back down. So we want to work out the, the distance travelled by P between the instant between this instant basically how far has it traveled to go from here to here well for that i'm going to need to know actually not the time that it took for q to get to the floor i'm not interested in that but i'm going to need to know the speed that p is going when the string loses its its, uh, its tautness so i've got these three things i can use v squared equals u squared plus 2as It's going to be 2 times 2.45 times 2.5. This gives 49 over 4. So V, well, I'm only really interested in the, you know, the the positive value. So I can just uh, take the square root. I don't need to include plus or minus. It's going to be actually 7 over 2 or 3.5. You can put that in your calculator if you want. But 3.5. And that's going to be 3.5 here going down. And P is going to have the same speed. So P will also have this speed but upwards okay that's going to be useful because i'm now going to look at stage two and it's going to be the duration when the string is not taut. So like I said, it's going to be going up and back down. Now I've just thought of something actually. When we use SUVAT, we find the displacement. So the displacement is going to be zero during that time period. But I've been asked to work out the distance. So actually, I need to change this. The duration is going to be um, duration from string becoming slack. To the max height. So actually, if I can work out the distance that it's travelled from here to the max height, I can then just double it. 
because it's going to come back down and like i said it's it's going to be in that exact same place that causes this to then this system to then sort of um become taut again the string to become taut so you i'm going to apply sorry i'm going to apply suvat to p and let's say it's moving up then u is going to be 3.5 that same speed as uh q had the moment before it landed but now the acceleration is going to be minus 9.8 it's going downwards in the opposite direction really important we think about these directions and then because it's reaching its max height at the max height it's going to become zero so v squared is u squared plus 2as zero is going to be 3.5 squared Actually, that's that 49 over 4 again. Minus 2 times 9.8, that's actually 19.6. So S is going to be this 49.4, which is 12.25, divided by 19.6. Okay, if I rearrange this equation and solve. And we get 0 0.625. So it then moves 0 0.625 meters back down. before the string becomes taught again. Therefore, distance moved is going to be 2 times 0.625 It's going to be 1.25 meters. All right, I feel like this part was quite tricky actually, especially just for four marks. We've had to do quite a lot, you know, showing a lot of understanding. Think about this one hitting the floor, think about what the velocity of that was, and realize that P has the same velocity. Then consider P just in its in uh, under the influence of gravity. It's moving up. It's got a velocity the same, three point five. We've got the acceleration. We've got the we look at where it. Um, we can't just use SUVAT because the displacement is zero from when it goes up and back down. So we have to look at the max heights when the velocity is instantaneously zero before it starts falling back down. Finding the distance travelled up to that point and doubling it. Like I said, quite a lot to do, but. That's our answer.